Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I wanted to take a second before we get started in learning about marketing to tell you a little bit about Builder's Backbone. Builder's Backbone is your all-in-one solution for accessing all parts of the construction industry from one convenient platform. To put it simply, we give builders, contractors, and other professionals who work in and around the construction industry access to office space, conference rooms, plus marketing assistance as well as other important resources designed to help your company look, act, and operate at the highest level possible. Because at the end of the day, we want to help you grow your business and make more money. We're really proud of what we've created here and we invite you to visit buildersbackbone.com after the presentation or contact us to take a tour of our Synergy Center. Are you ready to learn a little bit about marketing? All right, let's get started. So to get started, what we want to talk about today is, is marketing and give you a baseline for how to get started with your marketing. Uh, hopefully what you can learn today, if you have done no marketing at all, that's great. We can help you to get started and know where you need to start. Um, and so the first thing that we want to talk about is who, who are you? This yeah, it's probably the best way that I can sum this up is that if you own a business, you probably need to know who you are in order to tell people who you are. And that's often described as an elevator pitch. If you, has anybody heard of an elevator pitch before? Elevator pitch is you think about the ride that you have from in an elevator with somebody is maybe 10, 15, 20 seconds, depending what building you're going in, right? And you want to be able to tell somebody everything they need to know about your business, the most important things on that elevator ride. Now it seems super duper simple, right? It seems like, well, I know who I am. I, I sell insurance, of course, like, or, or I, I'm an adjuster, whatever. But it's a lot more hard than you think. It's easy to say a lot of words about what you do. It's really hard to narrow it down to 15 seconds worth of words. So this is something that you want to get figured out for yourself and practice it. Guys, literally practice it in the mirror. And, and tell yourself, hi, my name is Blaine Walker, I do marketing for Builders Backbone, and run through it and practice it. And it'll be one of the most important things that you can do uh, for yourself. I want to tell you how marketers uh, and lawyers are a lot alike. Um, lawyers have to have a law degree in order to practice law. But if you hire a lawyer to, to hear, to represent you do you want do you want them to just you just call them up and say hey show up and represent me no you want them to you want to meet with them tell them about your case tell them all about your stuff have them do all the research necessary so that when they go to court for you they're prepared marketing is really really similar in that way just because I'm a marketer doesn't mean that I can just do marketing for you there's a lot of background work that goes into it Justina will attest to this I'm learning a lot about insurance right now so that we can do marketing for her and help her. And I don't know insurance at all. So for me to be able to represent her and help her with her marketing, I'm gonna to have to learn a lot about insurance. So if you, if you think of it from that perspective, marketing is a process and you've gotta really learn who you are and what you're representing. So the next step after you've got your 15 second elevator pitch put together, it's a good idea to put something, a mission statement or a manifesto. Um, when you do that, it's, it's important to, again, to know who you are, but to summarize it so that you know what you're trying to do and other people can know what you're trying to do. If you have a website, you definitely want to put this onto your website. Now, some, some businesses are service businesses, other businesses are product businesses. You want to have, if you have a great product, you want to believe in it and become 100% converted. If you don't believe in your product, how in the world are you going to convince anyone else to believe in what you do? Um, I was talking to, to Mike and, is it Dave? Jason. Jason and Mike earlier, and they were telling me about what they do. It sounds really, really interesting. Like, they clearly are passionate about what they do and passionate about the product that they sell. And that comes across. A couple of examples that come to mind from my life are Magic Eraser and Rain-X. Everybody know these two products, Magic Eraser and Rain-X? Uh, Magic Eraser is amazing. Like, I'm not paid to endorse this thing at all, but... When I first saw Magic Eraser, it could get permanent marker off of things, it can get crayon off of things. I have two-year-old twins at home now. I buy Magic Erasers every single trip to the grocery store. But what a great product that does what it says it does. It's, it's unbelievable, and I've told, it's been years since I had first heard about it, but when I first heard about it, I told everybody I knew about it. Have you seen this thing? It's amazing. You need to try it. 
you need to have that same kind of passion about your business. Now, Rainex, uh, sorry, yeah, Rainex is, uh, <laughs> I'm going to tell you about Rainex. It's, it goes on your windshield and you wipe it onto your windshield and you can literally not use your windshield wipers then. Uh, the water will just bead up and fly off your windshield, especially if you're driving more than like 20 miles per hour. And it works better than your windshield wipers. Uh, that's another product that just, it, it works better than they describe it to even work. And so in that way, you want to tell people about it because there's no question that when they try it, they're going to have a great experience with it. They're going to, they're going to love it. And they're probably going to tell someone else too. Yeah, you can get it at the, at the ooh, auto store. No, not grocery store, auto store. Yeah. Um, so if you don't sell a product, that's not a problem. That's fine. What you want to do is that you want to represent yourself and the service that you provide. And don't be afraid to be an expert. Now, this applies more so to the online marketing world, uh, probably is the most applicable for this. But if you have a blog, do not be afraid. To, if you know what you're talking about and you know you're good at what you do, Nobody can tell you that you cannot say that you're an insurance expert or that you're a market, you're not a network marketing expert or you're not a wiffle ball bat expert. Whatever you care about, whatever you're good at, become an expert in it. Start writing about it. Start blogging about it. Start telling people everything you know about it and you can establish yourself as an expert. Now you think about it, if you're going to hire somebody to come to your house and do something for you, do you want to hire somebody who's just in business? Or do you want to hire somebody who says they are the expert, the best? So be the best and people will want to work with you. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to talk about here is, is getting your act together, which, which really just means looking like a real business. Now some of you have been in business for a while. This is something that you did a long time ago. If, if you're somebody like Jaime who's looking to get started, the thing that I'm going to tell you is that there's a few things that you want to get done and get out of the way so that you can start doing business and you can start marketing your business. You're going to want to get a logo because that's a pretty important thing. Uniforms, if your business requires uniforms or if you'd expect them to have uniforms, that's another important thing. You want to get your legal stuff taken care of. I'm not going to speak any more than that because I don't, not my thing to talk about. Um, you're going to want to buy domains. Um, what are domains? Domains are the www. whatever your business name is. com. That's an important thing that you're going to want to do. And also, you want to get your social media account set up. Once you've done once you've done these things, it's a lot easier for you to to, to have your act together, and you're going to look like a business. If people look for you online, they're going to find your Facebook page. If they look for you on Google, it might you might be a few pages back, but they're going to find you on Google if you have a website. If they come and see you, you're going to have a logo, you're going to have a uniform, you're going to look like a business, and it'll inspire the trust of the people. Because it's one thing to market yourself, but it's another thing to actually close the deal once they've met you, right? So you want to look the part, and that's what getting your act together is all about. Now, once you have your act together, let's get this show on the road and start already. One of the biggest things that I see people having a problem with is perfectionism. They want everything to be perfect, perfect before they get started. And it's a real, real problem and it holds so, so, so many people back. They get started with their business, they get their name, but they don't have the right logo or they don't have the right this or that, and they just never get started. Guys, it's so important to get started. And the reason, the reason that it's so important to get started is that the best kind of marketing is word of mouth marketing and you can't buy that. You can you might be able to pay people to talk about your business but they're not going to have the passion and they're not going to be honest about it the way that true honest to goodness word of mouth marketing is. And it, the best part guys is it's totally free. This is the this is the best kind of marketing and it doesn't cost you anything at all. All that it requires is that you get out there and knock on doors or talk to people or go to events or start doing business. That's what the most important thing is. And then people will be able to go on to Facebook or Yelp or even if they just write you a, uh, a testimonial and then you'll have it that you can share with people. Put it on a piece of paper and say, look, this is what people have said about me. It will help people have faith in you 
until they do business and then they have faith in you for themselves and tell other people. Now, inside reality versus outside perception. The inside reality it, for us, that's what we know our business is. We know that we're awesome at what we do. We believe we're awesome at what we do. But does everyone else know that? And how are they going to know that? That's, that's kind of the whole point of marketing is that you know you're great. You know what you're good at. But you need to be able to communicate that to everyone else. And you need to be able to convince them that, you're as, that you are awesome. So... What is, what's our marketing supposed to do? It's, it, we're supposed to tell everybody that, that we're awesome, that they want to do business with us. The ultimate goal is, is this quote. Um, this comes from the Monopolize Your Marketplace School of Thinking, and it says, I'd have to be an absolute fool to do business with anyone else but you, regardless of price. This, uh, this is super powerful if you think about it. I'd have to be an absolute fool to do business with anyone else but you, regardless of price. This means that you are providing them with such great service, such a great product, such a great relationship that they would not go anywhere else even if you're charging more than the competition because the way that you handle the account, because the way that you interact with them, because of the service that you're providing them, because of the, the little things. Oftentimes it's really the little things. But guys, this is the ultimate goal of, of what your marketing should be is to, to get people to be wanting to do business with you regardless of what you're charging. So let's talk about the marketing funnel. I've given you guys all a handout. It'll be here on the, on the screen, but you'll have the handout to take home. This, uh, the marketing funnel is the way that people move through the marketing process, uh, moving from the top of, of awareness down to the actual sell. We're going to talk about each one of these and how you can help move them through that process to the point where you've converted them to a sale. So the first one here is, is awareness. Now, we, we know who we are, we know that we're great at what we do, but we need to start putting it out there and telling people about it. So you're gonna start putting ads on Facebook or posts on Facebook, posts on Twitter, um, put an ad in the green sheet. There's lots and lots of different places that you can put an ad depending on what business you're in and what where your customers are at. But you want to start putting it out there because people are going to ignore your ad the first, second, three, four, five, six, seven times they see it. But if they keep seeing your ad, they're going to eventually say, it's going to stick in their mind, your logo is going to become familiar, and they're going to say, I keep seeing this thing, they're saying something that's great, I'm going to look into it. You'll finally get it if you stick with it. Don't be the person who places one ad for one week doesn't see results, and then gives up. That's the worst thing that you can do. You must, must, must be persistent. And I can attest, even with what we're doing here at Builder's Backbone, it has taken months and months and months of saying the same thing over and over and over to finally capture people's attention. But if you stick with it, you will get the benefit. It will pay off. Um, the next thing that you want to do is, is get their interest. Basically, if you're talking about a social media platform like Facebook or Instagram, you're scrolling. Does everybody have Inst Who has Instagram? Anybody have Instagram? A few people here. You guys will know that, that you're looking through it and you're scrolling along, you're scrolling along, and some things will stop and catch your attention and other things don't. You're just going to keep scrolling. Your goal is to get people to stop what they're doing and look at what, you're, at what you've put in front of them. So you want to get your buyer to, to, to stop scrolling and to look at your ad and get their interest. After you have their interest, you want to build a desire in them to buy what you're selling. Uh, that basically is just that they saw your ad, they looked at it, they're interested in it, and they want it. But we don't just buy things that we want. We don't just say, I want that, I'm going to go buy it, order it. What do we usually do when we want to buy something? When you want to buy something, you decide you want to buy it, but yeah, to do what? To look, to look up information, to, to find out, are there other brands? Are there better prices? Are there, is this the newest one, the oldest one? Are there different things? You want to do research. And so once they have a desire, you want to educate them. And you want to answer the questions that they're asking or that they should ask. Sometimes they don't know what questions that they should be asking. I'm sure our insurance people would know that, that your customers don't even know what questions they should be asking. But you know what questions they should be asking. 
And so we want to answer those for them so that they understand what they're buying. Um, after education, this, this one comes back it's to the customer and it's the justification process. This is the part as a marketer where we get out of the way and we let them sell themselves and make it as easy as possible to make the conversion. If you're selling a product, let them go to your website and buy it. If, if you have a service, close the deal. But basically, shut up and stop talking and let the deal happen. So, and finally, once you have, once that you get to the bottom of the funnel, you've, you've sold your product and that's the whole point. So there's two secrets, sales secrets that I want to share with you. This is just from my own personal experience. Um, and that is, the first one is, second money is easier to get than first money. What this means is that uh, everybody has bought a car here before, right? Every, or a used car, everybody's bought a car before. Uh, as a car salesman, it's a lot easier to get somebody to add rims to a car than to sell somebody rims to a car that they've owned for a year. It's easier once they've already pulled their wallet out and they've written you a check for a large amount. It's easier to get that extra add-on or that extra upsell while you've got them spending. So if your product or your service is something that can be upsold or things can be added to it, that's the time to do it, is when, when you close the deal, they've pulled out their wallet, that's the time to get those additional sales at that moment. And the next thing that will help you, and I find this to be super duper true, is be agreeable at all times. All the time. If you can make it a goal, and it's actually kind of hard, but if you can try and practice being agreeable at all times, it'll help you more than most anything else I can think of in, in the sales process. That means, for example, let's say you're selling cars. I don't know why I'm on cars on the brain. It's probably because we talked about it earlier. Uh, if you're selling cars, the person says, oh, I don't know. I, I need to go talk to my wife. As a salesperson, you say, oh, yeah, you definitely probably want to talk to your wife. I would absolutely encourage that you talk to your wife. Let's go to the office. I've got a phone. You can give her a call. Let's, let's, let's let you talk to her. I'll tell her whatever she needs to know. We can get this deal done today. Rather than, no, you don't need to talk to her. That's fine. She's okay. She's not going to work. You want to be agreeable. If you're agreeable, you're going along together towards the sale. And it's a lot more charming and it's a lot more fun and it's a lot more what you want than to disagree because it just doesn't feel right and the person will not make the deal with you if you're, if you're disagreeable. So those are just two secrets that I've learned to be true. Now, we talked about what our ads should do, what they should have in them a little bit, but how do you make an effective ad? Whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on Instagram, whether it's in the newspaper, what in the world should be in it? Well, the first thing I want to talk about is, is what should not be in your ad, and that is a thing called platitudes. If you don't know what a platitude is, a platitude is are those things that, um, can we see them now on the screen? There we go, here we go. Things that, like in this ad, would say, uh, this is a garage door repair ad. I pulled it up last night, um, just a random place. I'm not sure where, where it's, Pens it's in Pensacola, it looks like. So these people are saying that they, uh, if you've got a garage door problem, we can fix it today. 24-hour emergency service at no extra charge. Now here's a few platitudes. This one, certified technicians, uh, new door sales, highest quality parts. These are platitudes because they are things that you would expect from the company already. If, if they aren't able to provide that, I'm not going to do business with them in any way. So don't tell them things that you're wasting space in your ad if you're telling them things that they should already expect from you. If you're, if, if you're just wasting space, certified technician, free, we've all seen these before, free estimate, lowest prices, fast service, we accept credit and debit, high quality, friendly staff. If these are the things that you think are what sets you apart, your marketing is not going to work. Because everyone says this, right? Everybody says this stuff. Every single ad, we could pull up any ad online and it's going to say one of these things or all of these things. What we want to do is we want to figure out uh, what makes you different. So we're going to apply the well, I'd hope so test to your marketing. So take your, your ad that you have, that you've made. If you've made an ad, you look at it and you sit, check each single point on that ad. And if the answer to what you've said is, well, I'd hope so, get rid of it. Get it out of your ad. You might think that it's crazy. No, I need to tell them that we have the lowest prices. No, you don't. You don't have to. 
they they will find that out when they call you. They will find that out when they come and talk to you. So if you apply the well I'd hope so test, you'll be able to get rid of platitudes from your marketing and put out a more effective ad that's going to work better. Now the next thing that you want to do is you want to set yourself apart. If platitudes are what everybody's saying, you want to find the things that no one is saying and say them about your business. This is probably the most important thing I'm going to share with you today is that you need to find something that makes you different from your competition. Now some of you are in a business, some but some of like if you're in the business of selling magic erasers, I don't think there's a lot of competition in that business. They can just say what they are. But if you're in a business where your competitors are very similar to you, maybe insurance is this way, I'm, I don't know. But if, you, if in this example on the screen here, these people sell video game cabinets. Something that apparently is pretty similar across the board. A video game cabinet is a video game cabinet is a cab video game cabinet. So they, in this ad here on the left, the red ad, They've said, this is the HS27 cabinet. Uh, it has, it's this tall, it's the best in the industry, it has these features, blah, blah, blah. But they were not, this company was not getting any phone calls from this ad. They put it in the industry leading magazine and they were getting no leads. They said, what's wrong? We build a great cabinet. We put more money and more effort into building our cabinets than anyone else. Why aren't, why is our ads not working? Why isn't it working? So they hired a marketing company to come in and the only thing that they did was they dove into their process the way a lawyer would dive into a case. And they found out the little details that made their product and their video game cabinet different from everyone else. So they're looking, they're in the shop. They're looking at how it's built. This is Steve. He puts the sides on the cabinet. This is Dave. He puts the buttons in the cabinet. This is Jake. He puts the dowels in the cabinet. Wait. He puts the dowels in the cabinet? Yeah, he puts the dowels in the cabinet. We put 172 dowels in every single cabinet. Turns out, no one else in the industry puts any wooden dowels to support the cabinet from left to right. And this company was putting 172 dowels in their cabinet and never even mentioning it in any of their marketing. So you find what they did is they found this one point that no one else could say. No other manufacturer could say this. And they put that at the big tip top of their marketing right there, 172 hardwood dowels. Now you're looking through a magazine, especially if you're looking to buy a video game console, and this ad says 172 hardwood dowels. Why is that a headline? And what does it mean? And you start reading, and you find out that, that uh, 172 hardwood dowels reinforce every Dynamo HS15 cabinet. Other brands unexplicably have zero. So this, guys, is what sets them apart. Now, this second ad here, the 172 ad, they, they, they got so many phone calls, they had to stop placing the ad. They got, so many, they got backed up with orders. They didn't run the ad the next month because they got so many orders from that. Uh, when they ca finally caught up, they ran these two other ads that, uh, that they said, the biggest threat to your video game cabinet could be an Allen wrench and screwdriver that some 13-year-old kid took from his dad's toolbox. The ad goes on to explain that in their video game cabinets, they use a special star hardware that you can't get from your dad's toolbox, so kids aren't going to take it apart in the, in the, at the uh, arcade. Um, this other ad says, we had the biggest, fattest guy we could find jump up and down on our HS27 control panel for 12 minutes just to make sure it could endure any punish punishment your customers could dish out all things that none of their comp competition could say. So they said it, and that's what put their unique foot forward. Now, the way that you can find out if your ad is effective or not, if you have ads right now, the challenge I would give you is this, to do the cross-out test. The cross-out test simply means if you cross out your phone number, your website, and address, and you switch it with your com competitions and you put your competitions, phone number, website and address on your ad and it could still run and be true and be accurate, then you are not setting yourself apart enough. Does that make sense? They, when, we come, when we go back to, to this other video game cabinet places, they couldn't switch their logo out and the ad's true because they're not putting wood dowels in their video game cabinets. So they couldn't, do, they couldn't pass the cross out test. So if, guys, if your ads 
could if you could remove your name, website, and contact info and put someone else's in there and the ad would still run and be true, you've wasted your time, you've wasted your money, and your, your marketing's not going to do it well. So try the cross out test. Now here's three ads. I want to let you guys look at those and decide which one you think is the better of the three ads. Is anybody brave enough to venture a guess or an opinion? Um, for of these three ads, this this one here is is a much better ad because it's a lot cleaner, it's less cluttered, it's less filled with platitudes, and it touches on hot button topics that that for garage doors attach it to the things you care about, like your family. So they put safe garage doors and they put a picture of a child. You know, if we have a garage door and children, we worry about our kids getting hurt around the garage door, hanging on it, getting squished by it, any of those things. So seeing children and a garage door and the word safe, I have to know what the rest of this ad is about. So here's two more good examples of, of ads that say things that other people can't. First one says, 18 years in business, 650 bathrooms remodeled, zero BBB complaints. That is pretty impressive. That's a pretty impressive thing. So if your company has something like this, if you've been in business a bunch of years and you've done a bunch of business, you have zero complaints, say something like that because chances are your competition can't. This last one here, we don't know why it takes two and a half hours to sell you replacement windows either. We're in and out and done in 59 minutes or less. So this company who does windows, they found that by speeding up their process, by getting the windows sold, installed, in and out faster, that's what made them different from the competition. That's what made them better. And when they ran these ads, they got much more business, much more conversions, and it meant more money in their pocket. So the next thing here that you need to understand is something called the marketing equation. And guys, all of this will be, you'll have this available. I'll give you this presentation because I know it's a lot to digest in one, in one sitting. Uh, the marketing equation basically cons consists of, of you want to interrupt your prospect, engage them, educate them, and make an offer. So we're going to examine one ad here. This, this ad says, there's a reason remodeling contractors can't be trusted. Sounds exactly like what we talked about earlier, right? Uh, now, everybody's heard the, the phrase sex sells. Everybody heard that? Sex sells. Everybody's heard that, right? I'm here to tell you, unless you're selling sex, sex does not sell. Sex interrupts. That's all it does. Sex interrupts. So you're driving down the, the freeway and you see a beautiful person on a billboard. Yeah, you're going to pay attention to it, but chances are you're not going to remember what the ad was for. You just saw a beautiful person, and that's what you're going to think about. You need to interrupt your prospect with something that makes them want to take a second look and look deeper. This here says there's a reason remodeling contractors can't be trusted. This ad is for a remodeling contractor. So they've said there's a reason remodeling contractors can't be trusted. And then down here in the corner, down right down here, they put the, actually the most important part of their ad, the meat, the offer, everything is down there. Because once they've got your attention, you've read that, they know you're going to look closer. So once you've interrupted your prospect, you want to engage them and allow them to read the headlines and the sub-headlines. After engaging them, you educate them. Now, you can sometimes educate them on the spot in your ad, but more than likely, you're going to need to educate them in person or with something that you give to them or send to them or let them watch. So because of that, uh, you, and with education, what we're doing is we're answering the questions that they should be asking. We're giving them the information to be confident in their purchase, to feel like they're not taking a risk, to, to make them more confident and less scared of buying from you. Um, and, and with education, don't be afraid to share your information, guys. Like, for example, I'm a marketing person. I would love to sell any of you marketing, but I'm here teaching you about marketing. I'm not afraid to share the information with you because at the end of this, you should understand that I know what I'm talking about and if you don't feel like you can do it yourself I can help you with it all of your customers are the same way so with pools teach them about pools tell them the things that they need to know about pools help them know that you're an expert and they're gonna want to come back and talk to you for the things that they can't do themselves
Right. Yeah. So, Miguel. Well, you're going to say you're an expert, Miguel, but so did the guy who's actually not an expert. They're going to say they're an expert and that they're trustworthy and they're not trustworthy. You could do an ad like this one. You could put an ad out there and say there's a reason why you should not trust pool, I don't know, pool contractors. There's a reason you should not, that pool tr contractors can't be trusted. And then they're going to say, what, what's the reason? What are they? What, what do I need to know? And in turn, we could offer them something, a, uh, you know, a booklet or a flyer or a link to a website or a download. Give them the information that they need to know, and then it's going to make it easy for them to see why you're the right person to choose. Why there's fly-by-night people who are doing sketchy things that could burn them, and how to know the difference. Sure. You're best to do that. You're really your best to do that. And what will happen is two things. You'll get a lot more customers and your competition will hate you more. So great. Do it. Like that, that's, what, that's really what you should be doing. Educate them. Miguel, that's exactly what you need to do. And, and what I'm saying here is that interrupt them, get their attention, and then teach them. Tell them the things they need to know about why you're the right person to choose why you guys are the right designers to hire, why you guys are the right, right people to do adjustments for them or insurance or whatever you sell, SEO. Teach, teach them. Give, them an, give yourself an opportunity to teach them while you, why you're the right person. And you can do that by making an offer. Here at the bottom of this ad, I know it's really hard to see, but it, it, it says free guide. You can, you can click on, or you can cut that out or call the number. Uh, I think this is, I think there's a like, website on that. It's very small, phone number. But get your free guide that learn and learn why remodeling contractors can't be trusted. And in this instance, that guide goes through step by step and tells you how to hire a remodeling contractor that you can trust. And if they follow everything in that guide, you, his business lines up with that and it makes it a clear choice that you want to hire him instead of anyone else. Now, if you do those things, it's going to lead to, to sales and results. And, and that's what we're all really after. So the marketing equation, guys, interrupt, engage, educate, offer, and you'll get results. So, and a small tip to add to this is that you want to deliver value disproportionately. This is a little bit like what Miguel and I have been saying here is don't be afraid to teach them. Don't be afraid to share with them. Unless, unless you're, what you're selling them is the information, don't be afraid to share with them how you do what you do. I would love to know how insurance works and why I should buy this certain type of insurance and why this one costs more and why this one, I'd love to understand that. But nobody's teaching me about it. So either of you could do that. You could start doing a blog or a YouTube channel and tell people that stuff that to you is common sense, but to me, who I don't know anything about it, I'd love to watch that. Even if they're two, three minute clips, this is, this is this type of insurance, and this is why you should own it. And this is another type of insurance, and this is why you shouldn't own it. Or this is why you should consider this instead of this. Simple stuff, but it educates people. And when they're educated, they'll trust you more. They'll come back to you because you're the person that taught them. We all trust our teachers more. So don't be afraid to share them. Just like Miguel said, everybody's afraid to tell people what they know. Don't be afraid to tell people what you know. Chances are they're not going to be able to do it as well as you are and they'll end up hiring you. So, um, 
once you know what you said you're gonna say you have got your advertisement together you know what you're saying you've got your ad you know what you want to do you've got to put it out there and the only ways to put it out there are well there's a few ways but the most important ones that you want to do is you want to have a website uh, social media email uh, and then you've got other things to consider like snail mail and face-to-face -face marketing now with websites you've got a couple of options I'm helping Justina to build a website right now I know some of <laughs> and I know some of you have websites some of you don't um, but you've got two choices you can do it yourself or you can hire someone to help you if you hire someone to do it for you the thing that you're gonna consider you're gonna find out is that the design cost can be anywhere from 500 to 5,000 even more than that in some instances depending on how big your website is I'm sure yeah so so for, for all of us it, starting our businesses getting started you can probably find someone to design a website for you around five hundred dollars it's not going to be the most elaborate website in the world but it will be everything that you need to get started and to build a platform and you can scale up and make it as nice and as fancy as you want uh, beyond that you're probably going to have a maintenance and upkeep fee which could range from between fifty to fifteen hundred dollars a month sometimes more than that depending on your website and your needs so that's the option of paying someone to do it you do have an option to build a website yourself you can do that uh, if you're not computer literate and you're not already pretty good at doing it I wouldn't recommend it but it's out there for you you first thing that you'll need to do is buy your domain you want it to be short easy to spell easy to remember and it's still best to get a dot com name uh, they're harder and harder to get but it's the thing that we all presume is the if I said if I said go to my website it's uh, builders backbone you would assume it's buildersbackbone.com not buildersbackbone.tv or .net or .org so there that doesn't mean that .net and .org and those are bad but if it's possible I recommend you get a .com website uh, and you're gonna need a host to ho have hosting or a platform I'm gonna speak to you from the angle of a platform that's something like Wix or Squarespace or Weebly these are ones that'll let you build the website yourself um, again you're not going to come out with something as beautiful beautiful or interactive as having somebody build it for you but you can do it um, and the cost to do that is going to be anywhere from twenty to one hundred dollars a month uh, ongoing once you have a website up and going you're going to want to attack your social media social media is your best bet for marketing nowadays guys it's just for the amount of the amount of results that you get for your investment oh and in a lot of times with no investment you can get the most reach to people you ask yourself where do I what social media which ones do I do now this is a class for another day and a class that we've had before and we'll have again but your options are things like Facebook Instagram um, Facebook Instagram Twitter snapchat and others now I want to just take a second here and stop at others and say that if you have a business you've got your website you've got your Facebook your Instagram account keep your ear to the ground for new for new social media channels because one time myspace was the big daddy of all social media accounts and now myspace isn't does anyone even have a myspace account if you're not in music you probably don't but Facebook came along and Facebook displaced them and then after that Instagram came along and Instagram has its own thing so keep your ear to the ground the reason is when you hear of a new one go there and register your name so get um, at builders backbone or or at best marketing or whatever the name of your company is go and get that name if the social if that if that platform takes off you'll be really happy that you got it and someone else didn't snatch it up if it doesn't it didn't cost you anything but always keep your ear to the ground for new social media networks and snatch up your name uh, so you can the last thing is is people are asking me all the time what do I post on social media I know I'm supposed to be on Facebook I know I'm supposed to be on Instagram but what am I gonna post I've heard that you're supposed to tell people what you had for breakfast or or what take pictures of your dog and I don't have a dog and guys it's not it's really not hard I've put some, together something it's in your handout packet it's an acronym it's think of more posts which stands for uh, think stands for tell us what is going on now these are the things that you're going to if you're wondering what do I post on Instagram what do I post on Facebook you should post things as frequently as possible but here's some ideas tell us what's going on in your world around you 
well, what is going on? It can be something very simple. It could be a big announcement. You want to use hashtags. You can post inspiring things, news, knowledge. Uh, you can tell us about your people. Uh, posting films and videos is an important thing. I'm going to take a second to stop here and tell you that there's not a better thing to post online right now than videos. Videos are getting more attention um, by users, from what I understand, and the algorithm is favoring videos more than anything else on Instagram. So if you put pictures on Instagram, they will not be seen by as many people as a video will. A video will get shown to more people. So given the choice between taking a picture of myself, you know, let's say I'm painting a wall and I want to take a picture of myself by my paint bucket, push the record button and record yourself and tell me that you're painting the wall and put a video up and it'll get four times as much attention and it'll have a chance of being seen by four times as many people. That's an estimate. I don't know the exact amount, but a lot more. So if you've got a choice, put a video up instead of a picture. It looks better. Um, the other things you can post are memes, uh, things about the culture of your company. You can repost other things people have shared, entertaining things, pictures, offers, sneak peeks, uh, tips and tricks, and sayings and quotes. Now I want to tell you about sneak peeks and tips and tricks. These are, um, tell me about, you know, tell me about the things that most people don't get to see every day. Uh, so for, for Miguel, show me how you get, re sh record you getting ready to go to a job. Show me what process is involved and what tools you get out and what things you put in your truck and help give me a give me a glimpse into the, the day that you uh, an average day for you because that's interesting think about it guys when you go online and you're watching things or you're you're choosing what to see you always want to get a sneak peek or a behind the scenes look or everyone gets to see what's forward facing everybody but everybody loves to see what's behind the curtain everybody want to see how it works not just see it work so that's a great way to get some attention, is showing people a little bit of the behind the scenes. Now, if what you do is proprietary, you don't want to share your proprietary secrets, but don't presume that what you do is boring and no one wants to see it. If it's Oftentimes, it's interesting to people. I would love to know more. I mean, I, these guys were telling me about a software that they use. The name is Xactimate. I would love to see a little bit of how Xactimate works. I don't need a whole lesson. But I'd love to see a 30 second clip of, of kind of how they use it to manipulate and figure out an estimate for, for what they do for contractors. Show, you, show the behind the scenes stuff it, it, and tell people what you do. That's, those are some things that you can do uh, if you're not sure what to put online. Then turn up the juice. You can boost your posts on Facebook and Instagram by paying money. You can pay money and, and it will get shown to more people than just your friends. Now, online, if you, if you share something on Facebook, it's just going to go to the people who are your friends and connected to you. The only way, and, but if you want it to be seen by more than that, if you've only got a few friends online or you're just getting started, you can pay and it will get shown to more people. But what people? You can choose. You can choose if it gets shown to, to men, women, what state, even what, what zip code, area code. You can choose even as detailed as people that like to listen to Beyonce and live in Las Vegas. We can show your ads to those people. If those are your customers, we can do that. So, uh, you know, for, for Miguel, you don't want, you probably don't want teenagers to see your ads. It would be a waste of your money. You want homeowners to see your ads. So we would select homeowners in that list on Facebook and, or, and Instagram, they work together, and that's going to get your ad out to homeowners. Now, you don't want homeowners in North Dakota to see your ad. You want homeowners in Houston to see it. So we'll select Houston and probably the more affluent areas of Houston that have more money. Now we're putting your ad out in front of the eyeballs of the people that matter. Not just everybody and hoping that somebody sees it. Let's get really specific with who we want to see it and put it out there. We can do that. The other thing that you can do, if you don't have money to pay for ads, that's not a problem. There still are other ways. You can use hashtags. These are, everybody's heard of hashtags, it's, it's the, the number sign and then a word behind it. So, for example, you could have a post just, you know, that says hashtag insurance or hashtag Houston insurance. And then I might go on social media and say, I want to see what posts are out there related to Houston insurance. 
And if they do that, your stuff will be included in that list. Instagram just changed the way that their app works to let you follow hashtags. This is a really, really big deal because I can tell my account I want to see any hashtag that gets posted that's related to coffee. Now, anytime somebody that posts a coffee thing, it'll get included in my, uh, my stream. And I'm looking through it and I'll see things from people that aren't my friends that I don't know, but we have this coffee thing in common. And so I'm going to see their stuff. So if there might be a new coffee house that is trying to get up and going and they're saying, here's an offer, a free cup of coffee, just come and tell us this secret code and you get a free cup of coffee. And they didn't have to pay anything for that app. So you can do that. Um, and then uh, use proper SEO techniques. That's an entirely different lesson with a lot of detail for another day, but it's important to know. Uh, next thing is email. If you're just getting started with email, you've got to build an email list. How do you build an email list? You've got to trade something for their email. You think about all the times you've gone to the grocery store and they filled out a rewards card. They gave you a rewards card and they asked for your email. That's how they got it. They gave you a reward in trade for your email. Uh, you can trade something like a report teaching people why they need to buy insurance and what types of insurance. Download this free report. They come to the page. And it's going to say what? Input your email here and your name and download the report. And then they have your email and they can start sending you emails from them. And that's what you want to do. So think about, guys, what can you offer to people in trade for their email address? What can you give them? And that's how you're going to build your email, your email list. You can use things like there's two services called Unbounce and Lead Pages. They cost money, but they're very effective and they're easy to use. They will help you build a landing page that will do that conversion for you. That it, it'll come there and it'll say, put your email and name in here and click this and get this report. So all you do is upload the report one time and then everyone who comes and puts their email and name, it'll send the report to them and it'll give you a list at the end of the week of all the people who did it. So that's how you grow your email list. Uh, snail mail is not a dead thing, but it's not super effective. We all get junk mail and we all throw it away really quick, right? You walk from the mailbox to the house, you sort through the things you know are important, you throw the others away, shred them, and they're gone. But think about if you got one of these two things in the mail. Tell me you wouldn't stop and think about why in the world you got a coconut or a medicine bottle with your name on it. These are two good ideas of how you can use snail mail to get people's attention. Now this comes back, remember earlier, we want to interrupt, engage, educate, and offer. If you get a coconut or a medicine bottle with a message in it in the mail, I guarantee you've interrupted your prospect. You've engaged them because they're going to want to figure out why is this here? This is not normal. And then you get your chance to deliver your message. You can put a message inside the medicine bottle like they've done there or the coconut. I'm pretty sure they have their website written on the back. Um, that's a good way to use the mail. It's a little bit quirky and weird. But I promise you, it's not going to get thrown away with all the other junk mail mailers and other things on the way in from the, from the mailbox. Uh, there's one other one that I didn't put here. It's called lumpy mail. If you don't have the money or ability to, to do this yet, you can send a literal piece of mail in an envelope like this with a stamp, but put something inside of it that's just bumpy or lumpy enough to make people wonder what in the world is in this letter. Of, uh, something probably bigger than a penny, but I don't think you're allowed to send a pencil. So, but there are things like a bottle cap that you could put inside of an envelope and then make your marketing piece have to do with a bottle cap, tie it together into your message. And I promise people will open that piece of mail because who wouldn't want to know why it's a weird bumpy piece of mail. I don't think you can send pencils. I don't think so. It, I am pretty sure because I used to have aunts and uncles that would send pencils as a birthday gift and they'd never come. So maybe you can now, but check on it because there's a lot of different knick-knack things that you can get from the stores that, uh, I mean, on Harwin nearby or anywhere else that you can buy a lot of them. As long as they'll fit in that envelope and they'll, they, they'll stay mostly flat, it'll go through the mail system. And all you want is, is your prospect to be able to feel what in the world is in this envelope and want to open it up and see. So something to consider. The last thing uh, marketing wise that I recommend you do is face to face marketing. You're doing that here today right now. You have came to a meetup, a networking event, and you've talked to each other. It's a great way to do marketing is just telling people what you do. 
Everyone likes to do business with people that they know rather than strangers. If you've met somebody, you're going to want to work with them. If you need to hire a, a car mechanic, uh, it's always better to go with somebody that you know, a family member or a friend who's a mechanic, because you trust them more. If you're going to hire a contractor, it's always better to hire a contractor that you know that's a family member or a friend, because you trust them. So get out there and build relationships of trust with people, and you'll find that it leads to, uh, leads to business for you. It leads to money. So, and last, guys, never stop learning. There's, I can teach you all day long about marketing and tell you what I know, but really what's going to matter is what you're going to do with it. But what I've told you today is only going to be true maybe till the end of the year. And, and some of it's going to be true for till the end of time. Other things are going to change. Uh, the ways that you can stay current on marketing and, and your industry, and you should stay current on both, is podcasts, books, vlogs, uh, that's, that's vi like a video blog on YouTube, um, conferences, seminars, workshops, but be a student of your craft. Stay current on, on industry magazines, on what's going on in your industry. Our designers will know this is super duper true for you guys, like what's, what's, what's in style now and by the end of the year could be totally different, right? Like, so for you guys, it's super, and our pool guys also, same thing, is being current on what the trends are in your industry is super important. So, so if given the choice on your drive home between listening to the radio or opening your phone and finding a podcast, I guarantee you there's somebody who's making a podcast and putting out a new, something new every single week talking about your industry. Every single person in here, has, I know there is, because I've listened to them or I've seen them as I'm looking for things. So if you haven't checked out podcasts, check them out. It's a great way that you can multitask, you can mow your yard or mop your floor while you got your earbuds in. You can be learning while you're doing something else. So, uh, th guys, that's, that's what I have to share with you today. Do you have any questions? I'd love to answer questions, whether you want to talk here or if you want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one after. That, that's fine. Um, does anybody have any questions in front of the group? No? Okay. Well, then that, that's our presentation, guys. Thank you for coming. I'll be here for as long as anybody wants to talk or come and ask me questions.